No sport utilizes the mechanics of physics more so than ice hockey. 200 pounds of muscle balanced on a quarter inch of sharpened steel, slicing across a sheet of ice at speeds of more than 20 miles per hour, encountering collisions that produce 80,000 joules, all while trying to use a carbon fiber stick to get a three inch, six ounce puck of vulcanized rubber past a goalie who covers 70% of a rectangular net. With so many different factors affecting every stride, hit, and shot, how does one become the best of the best? Physics can be used to break down certain aspects of the game and demonstrate how to maximize every move one makes. Today, we will explore the physics behind bone-crushing hits and lightning-fast shots. good if you're doing the hitting right, but what if you're on the other side of the hit? What's the best way to take a hit so that you can be least affected by it? A major misconception some people have is that getting hit against the boards will be more painful than getting hit away from them, but that clip isn't convincing me. The boards can actually be your best friend. In this first hit, Austin is standing a few feet away from the wall. As soon as I make impact with him, he starts to accelerate towards the wall. Whereas in this hit, Austin is flush with the boards and does not have room to accelerate before hitting the wall. Clearly, Austin's impact with the boards in the first hit is much more violent than in the second. Why is this? The answer is physics. Newton's first law, in essence, states that an object will remain in constant motion until acted upon by an outside force, in which case it will accelerate. And Newton's third law of motion states that when a force acts on an object, there will be an equal force in the opposite direction. Therefore, when I hit Austin, he will accelerate towards the wall before he hits it. Because he hits the wall with a greater acceleration, the force with which he hits the wall is also greater. Staying along the boards can help lessen the impact of the hit, giving you a greater chance of skating through the hit. An open ice hit is much more violent, and this time there are no boards to lean up against. The key to taking an open ice hit is getting your speed as close to the opposing player's speed as possible. This will lessen how much you fall back when you get hit. The reason for this is the law of momentum conservation. The total momentum of two objects before they collide will be equivalent to the total momentum of the system after they collide. If, hypothetically, player 1 and player 2 have the same mass and are moving at the same speed towards each other, when they hit, there will be very little recoil from either player. The ideal situation would to be going much faster than the opposing player, because then for the momentum to be conserved, the other player will have to be propelled backwards. That being said, if the other player is moving faster than you, the best thing to do is increase your speed as much as possible to minimize your recoil. A slap shot is the strongest shot in hockey, but many people don't know how to get the full potential out of their shot. It is important to realize that when taking a slap shot, the stick must strike the ice before it hits the puck. Why is this? Let's look to physics for the answer. When the stick is lifted, it has gravitational potential energy. Then the stick is brought down, striking the ice a few inches before the puck. It is important to push down into the ice and flex the stick at this time. Modern sticks are made out of carbon fiber, allowing them to flex, and most can withstand more than 300 pounds, a flex of about 3 inches. When the stick is flexed, Potential or elastic energy is stored in the stick. Then the stick whips forward and strikes the puck, giving the puck kinetic energy. By flexing the stick on the ice, the stick is able to move faster than human arms can make it go when it strikes the puck. 
Due to the law of momentum conservation, which we learned about earlier, the faster the stick moves, the more momentum it will have and the faster the puck will fly off the stick. The second part of the slap shot is making the puck spin horizontally as it comes off the stick. To do this, the player must start with the puck on the heel of the stick and end with the puck rolling off the toe of his stick. The longer the puck is in contact with the blade of the stick, the faster it will spin. This spinning of the puck around a fixed axis is called angular motion. The spin helps to keep the puck straight as it flies towards the net due to the gyroscopic effect. The spinning puck will also have less surface area exposed to the drag of passing air. The height of a shot is also important to consider, especially for beginners who are still developing their shot. A high shot top shelf will have more distance to travel than a low shot. Therefore, a low shot will get to the net faster and give the goalie less time to react. For NHL players, the difference between a low and high shot may only be one hundredth of a second, but for slower shooters, a low shot can increase the chance of scoring. So the next time you hit the ice, remember these simple ways to take your game to the next level. Standing flush with the boards and getting as much speed as possible can help lessen the pain of a bone-crushing hit. Flexing your stick, spinning the puck, and shooting low will make goalies shudder when they see you winding up to rip a shot. And remember, every little thing is important when you play the fastest game on earth.